All right, Kayla. Thank you, everybody. Okay, I'm starting the webinar now. So quick, Dr. Sang Suk Kim. Yeah, he is here. Can you, can you speak in English for this session? Is that possible? We can ask everybody to speak in English for this session, if possible. Okay, we're ready. <clears throat> okay, welcome everybody to the closing session of an incredible three days, the International Leadership Conference presented by Universal Peace Federation. Today, we're gonna to be hearing from all the coordinators and moderators of each of the sessions to really celebrate the incredible victories and the things that we've learned along the way through these sessions. So for our first speaker, I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Franco Famularo. He is the president of UPF Canada to share about the ISCP session. Welcome, Dr. Mm -hmm. Franco. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Boa tarde. E bona primizi. Ambassadors for Peace, my report is on the International Summit Council for Peace session, which was entitled Influence of the Americas on Peaceful Reunification of the Korean Peninsula, and provided the perspective from Canada, Costa Rica, Korea, and the United States, and UPF international leaders. Dr. Jenkins, president of UPF International, introduced us to the global reach of UPF with current and former heads of state and high level government officials. And just as the Korean War involved support of the world community, the focus of the experts working group is global. And he elaborated on the good work of Dr. Sun Myung Moon and Dr. Hak Chahana Moon who have invested in educating people globally on a global uh, worldview based on God. The Right Honorable Stephen Harper, former Prime Minister of Canada, praised UPF mm -hmm. for shining out with hope for many decades and congratulated UPF for initiating the experts working group. He reminded us that South Korean progress continues despite threats from the North and that the contrast between the North and the South is drastic and that we must proceed with patience and persistence. And he elaborated on six practical points, which in, included such points as judging Korea not by its words, but by its actions and engage with promises, but have the possibility of threats and stay close to your allies and especially em emphasize the importance of the relationship between Korea, Japan, and the United States. Ambassador Detrani, former special envoy to the Sikh party talks, between the US, China, Russia, Japan, and North and South Korea, emphasized that the North is very interested in establishing a relationship with US, but is very concerned about regime change. Some successes like the recent summits and also many failures is that show that North Korea won't accept a one-sided process and emphasize the importance of financial assistance. The Honorable Fonseca, John Fonseca, the former Vice Trade Minister of, of, of Foreign Trade for Costa Rica, emphasized that development has to be redefined and people need to be central in this community well-being and that social capital is most important for mutual well-being and is realized through good relationships and that we should learn from the past, but we should not put our energy in the past, but in the present and go toward the future. Finally, Dr. Charles Young of UPF uh, emphasized that UPF has been leading efforts for decades with missions to Korea and that Reverend Moon uh, and Mrs. Moon met with Kim Il-sung and Gorbachev in the 90s in search for peace, and that the division of Korea was created by the USSR and USA very soon after the Second World War. The painful history of Korean families divided by the border imposed on them from outside powers. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this is a global effort that is needed. And Think Tank 2022, or the Experts Working Group, is an effort whose time has come through global effort, just like it was 70 years ago, we can find the key to resolving the issues of North and South Korea. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Famalero. It really was an incredible session with leaders represented from all over the world. Now we'd like to hear from Dr. Simo Faraboli, 
who coordinated the International Association for Parliamentarians for Peace session. He is the Secretary General of UPF South America. Dr. Faraboli, please join us. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, our session was the section three, International Association of Parliamentarians for Peace, IAPP, uh, with a team with courage and vision, building new bridges and opportunities for the Korean Peninsula. And we have uh, Dr. Moon Shi Kim in his welcoming remark remind us that in order to bring the reunification of North and South Korea, it is essential to take into consideration the political relationship and interest of those surrounding nations. That is why it is crucial to create the environment for superpower nations to support the reunification of North and South Korea. Honorable Gamborton, IAPP co-chairman, says as long as there is talking with North Korea, there is no fighting, even if the talks are frustrating and seems to product little immediate result. Congress, Congressman Borton conclude by saying the world needs a body of conscientious men and women of good faith who understand political process in the real world. That body is the IAPP. Honorable Humberto Benedetto from Paralasul from Argentina says that we believe that the reunification of Korea would be much more than a symbol for humanity, much more than the geopolitical importance that experts on the subject will surely highlight at, the, at this event. The reunification of Korea mm. will tell us the world peace is possible. Honorable Dr. Ricardo Azevedo Peralta for, from Parlasen, he gave the following suggestion, international control over the development of the atomic industry for peaceful purpose in North Korea, uh, complete military nuclear disarmament, social, economical, and political integration under equal conditions, which includes the establishment of a single nationality, territory, and central government. Honorable Jose Alfaro from Costa Rica, he says that the good news is that dozens of peace and other organizations in the world, hundreds of, of voice in the UN, in the Europe, Oceania, Africa, Americas, advocate and implore for the union of the Koreas. They are the brothers Koreas who long to see their relatives again, to be able to work together in the technological development and to lay the foundation for mutual coexistence and social and economic development. This was a powerful group of politicians that uh, had come together thanks to the IAPP and they were all inspired to, more, to do more to unite the two Koreas. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Faraboli. I love how you put it, a powerful group of politicians and parliamentarians working together for peace. Thank you so much. Now let's invite Mrs. Tomiko Duggan, the Senior Vice President of UPF USA to share about the Interreligious Association for Peace and Development. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Kere Mafet, UPIAPD uh, Interreligious Association for Peace Development was, was focused on the theme reunification, reuniting the brothers toward peace on the Korean Peninsula. Moderated by Archbishop George Augustus Stallings Jr. saying that there is a need for peace. Mother Moon is working tirelessly for peace. Peace is a core value that must become a universal value. This value was taught to us by Reverend and Mrs. Moon. Our first speaker, Dr. Ki Hoon Kim, joined from Korea. He's a chairman of the steering committee of the World Christian Leadership Conference. He said, it is a world breaking news to me since I fled from the North 
when the communists invaded. He said, today there is an incredible suffering and the disunity of social, political, racial, religious issues all around the world. Therefore, we, religious leaders, are called to uphold marriage and the family and the building a world of peace. Our second speaker, Haj Dr. Rashan Khan from Guyana. He said, Father Moon taught us that we are one family under God. We are catalyst for peace, having moral authority and looked up to as an interreligious entity that will bring solutions and solve conflict. Third one, Dr. Reverend Dr. Joseph Raja, Roman Catholic priest from St. Lucia. He said, by uniting the brothers, Jesus said at the last supper, I give you my peace, which the world cannot give you. It is God who gives us peace. Before offering your gift, make peace. It is God who gives us a peace. Before, uh, before you are offering gift, uh, your gift to make peace with your brothers. He said, we must not just pray, but create a situation for peace. Father Moon in his autobiography said, peaceful families are the building block of peace. If we must peace in the world, there has to be love in our families. Next speaker was Dr. Mozamil Siddiqui from uh, Orange County, California. He said, in terms of fasting, we turn to God. We need a spirit of love and respect. With so much conflict in the world, we are learning how much we are connected. We need to protect the life and honor all people, worship God and avoid evil. The fourth one, Reverend Belisha Wimbush Hale. She's a senior pastor from Ebenezer AME Church in Maryland. She said, in my role as a faith leader, I have a history of working with domestic violence, situations where there is a pain and lack of peace. We need peace at all levels and peace with God. True peace begets peace. As a children of God, we need to find peace in spirit of not having the ideal we need to keep seeking. She's concluded saying, Mother Moon says in her memoir, my lifelong goal is to fulfill the dream of God, to build heavenly parents, holy community, one family under God. Rabbi Idan Shea, joined uh, through video uh, from Ottawa, Canada. He said, for centuries, Jews knew that they or their children risked being murdered simply because they were Jews. Have to let go of that pain when it is written on my very soul. I must, for the sake of my children, we must answer hatred with love, violence with peace, and the conflict with reconciliation. The only way to do this is to forgive. And then uh, last speaker, speaker, Pastor o Orestes Sanchez from Peru. He said, our enemy is not a person, but the situation, love your enemy, do good to those who do evil. In Korea, they must overcome the bad by loving day by day. Show the brothers in the south, south love the brothers in the north. He concluded showing youth uh, pro proposing suggestions, youth campaigns with those who know the word of God, in the ships, with hundreds in, in, in invited to North and South Korea. Show love with medicines, vaccines to North Korea. Create a new attitude with love from South Korea to the North. 
he prayed, please God, North America and South become one, forgive the bad things and bring the new good things, put away weapons and bring down your love. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Tomoko. Yeah, that session had so much power and passion on this topic. It was so great to hear from all the religious leaders on this topic. Let's now move to the IFLP, the International Association of First Ladies for Peace. I'd like to welcome Mrs. Angela Caselli. She's the International Vice President of Women's Federation for World Peace and the President of Women's Federation for World Peace in North America. Angelica, we're happy to hear from you and your experience. Yeah, thank you, Kaylee. Thank you, distinguished leaders. Good afternoon. Um, it was a pleasure to uh, be in the women, the only women session of the ILC here in the Americas. I want to thank uh, all the leaders, our collaboration between the organizations and uh, our, our Americas was outstanding. And I think that was the reason for success in the women's session, which had a lot of uh, participation of almost 250. And uh, the spirit was surely overwhelmingly permeated with mother's heart. You could feel the difference as we had very distinguished panel comprised of Honorable Mrs. Mignon Bowen Phillips, the wife of the current Prime Minister of Guyana and two former first ladies from Nicaragua and Paraguay. Honorable Maria Fernando Flores de Aleman and Honorable Emilia Alfaro de Franco. Uh, Dr. Susan Taffer, the founder of World Connections, our moderator, greeted everyone warmly. We had a IFLP introductory video followed by an uh, in introduction by myself of the important uh, time that we live in, uh, the pivotal role of men and women working together, but also the founder's call for women to take a special, uh, uh, to, to contribute their gifts and talents for world peace. Dr. Julia Moon, our distinguished uh, president of Women's Federation said that um, the world's recent history headed by Atlantic um, Ocean nations maintaining power by masculine means of military strength and colonization is now uh, changing to the current Pacific Rim era. And she said, quote, if we are able to learn from our mistakes of the past and learn lean into the feminine nurturing approach to peacemaking, a world of peace is within reach. Our distinguished panelist, Honorable Bowen Phillips, spoke of Guyana's recent history of conflict, mass violence, uh, pre-independence. Pre and she acknowledged the limited communication between the two conflicting states and conveyed the importance of governments and global stakeholders to work together in seeking solutions to humanitarian concerns. All the ladies all uh, compared their own country situation with the Korean Peninsula and uh, sought to draw connection and also solutions from their experience. Honorable the Aleman shared of the extreme political divide in Nicaragua caused by injustice and how this division has prevented economic and socio-political stability. To resolve such issues, she said, and strongly emphasized the need for education, family values, and for the people to unite together for a worthy cause guided by leaders who seek the common good and who feel and care for their people sincerely over material gain. Um, lending Paraguay's experience to the reunification of the Koreas, Honorable Franco described the broad consensus that was needed in her country to, to take place uh, in her country to bring together the, the divided country. Uh, she said, um, this took the initiative of one great person who envisioned a unified future instead of control at the expense of the people. It was a very honest session. <laughs> and so uh, she empowered, she encouraged women to raise their voices and to gain visibility over the, uh, to effect change. Uh, we had concluding remarks from Rosmita Duke, who is the Women's Federation International Vice President of Latin America. And because there was time, we had question and answers after the closing remarks. And that really sparked an incredible discussion of what is the next step? What can be done in the Korean Peninsula? What can we do also in IFLP to bring positive change? So one suggestion was made to send a delegation of women leaders to North Korea and speak to the leadership there. 
and also to implement the solutions that we find together as we continue to collaborate as women leaders together with our partners, with our men, and uh, implement the solutions that are very simple but obvious, not to fight and to seek peaceful, peaceful approach to everything from the mother's heart. The, uh, Mrs. De Aleman really highlighted these special creatures of women <laughs> who have the the ability to be intuitive and sensitive and bring those qualities to the picture so that change can happen. It ended on a very positive note. We also announced the upcoming conference on October 22 uh, here in Washington DC, where we seek to invite 200 first ladies to continue the discussion, to continue to work together and bring that spirit of peace that we feel is real uh, to the picture and make the change happen. So thank you very much to all the leaders who supported uh, Dr. Jenkins, Dr. Young, Dr. Shin, all Mrs. Plessy, and all the leaders and colleagues in, uh, in all the Americas. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Angelica. Very powerful to have a group of women leaders putting their heads and hearts together to solve this problem. Thank you. So now we're going to hear from the IMAP session. It's the International Media Association for Peace. I'd like to welcome Mrs. Cheryl Wedstein, who is the coordinator of IMAP in North America. Welcome. Thank you. It's so good to see so many wonderful faces on this Zoom call. Uh, yes, we were the sixth session and our panelists came from Brazil, Peru, Nicaragua, and the United States. Uh, very briefly, the gentleman from uh, Brazil, uh, Dr. Rado, is a veteran journalist and president of the Sao Paulo Press Association, decades of experience. Uh, from Peru, Mr. Uh, Echeverria, also decades of experience. His work is in magazines, broadcasting, and telecommunications. From Nicaragua, we had a lovely a woman who has been named general manager of a very popular cable TV called Voss TV. Uh, they have excellent programming. Um, what was interesting is that right around the time of the I ILC, uh, Voss TV signed a memorandum of understanding with IMAP, which means that it uh, shares the goals and objectives of changing the media to be more uh, principled, ethical, uh, moral, <laughs> and uh, accurate. From the United States, we had two folks from the Washington Times, our dear chairman, Tom McDivitt, and our, one of our best reporters, Guy Taylor, who has been to uh, the Far East Asia, written about Korea's for years. I mean, he's an uh, excellent reporter who covers the uh, National Security State Department and Pentagon. The main points that came out, everybody agrees. Yes, the media, big big role in helping North and South Korea reunify. Um, details. Um, there should be a recognition that the freedom-loving press are different from state-controlled media. So own that, understand that, and don't get confused. And when propaganda pops up, deal with it wisely. It will be there. Um, they, they know that uh, some of the comments were that leaders who are trying to facilitate a change in this area of the world, they should know the time they live in. So even though it's been 70 years, we are in the current moment and therefore opportunities appear right now that weren't there before. So if you wanna choose to find peace, there will be a way to find it. Uh, many people brought up God, that this was not some kind of a Gordian knot that man is going to uh, untangle mankind, but rather we, we need to lean on the higher power and uh, the, the role of God in this. Um, <clears throat> media, they said, should be optimistic and, and not uh, negative and not hopeless, but be optimistic, promote justice, promote peace, promote harmony, promote alliances that appear now. Um, and somebody mentioned about how, you know, we are about uh, building bridges, not building walls. So in, in when I heard that, I thought, yeah, and the media should not get them confused. You know, when people are trying to make peace, don't throw wrenches into it. Um, 
several panelists uh, gave kudos to the Universal Peace Federation saying that it really stands in a unique position. It has experience, uh, it's on the ground, it's practical and it's taking a leadership role and we should pay attention to UPF. That was one of the quotes. And IMAP would, could definitely play a role in the importance of you know, helping media step up. Um, Several people also recognized by name, Reverend and Mrs. Moon, as exemplary leaders in this field of peacemaking, especially noticing their whole history of being, you know, taking a stance against communism and yet yeah, going to communist countries. Um, and I think the last point that I'll bring up here before I close is that um, in order to build a relationship with these closed societies like China and North Korea, obviously we have to find, uh, look for opportunities to connect. And as one person mentioned, we should have conferences in China, in North Korea, there should be a conference in Pyongyang and see if that doesn't just the fact, the mere fact of holding these events with people from outside could really be uh, something that breaks open the issue in ways that we cannot predict. So thank you. It was a really wonderful conference, a really good panel. Wow, thank you so much, Cheryl. Those were some pretty interesting points. Very grateful for all those who brought those up in their remarks and speeches. Let's now hear from the IAAP, International Association of Academicians for Peace. I'd like to welcome Reverend Robert Duffy, the Secretary General of UPF Canada to share about that session with us. I think you're muted, Reverend Duffy. There we go, there we go. Uh, thank you, Kaylee, for, uh, for your introduction and uh, for your moderating of this session. Um, I'll begin by saying that Dr. Dong Woo Kim uh, gave us his greetings and welcome. And then our first speaker was Dr. Tom Sullivan, who introduced three principles of heavenly society, which come from Father Moon, uh, as, we, as we know, love heaven, love people, and love the nation, and the highest value belongs to the creator. Uh, what Dr. Sullivan emphasized was the role of indigenous culture in, uh, on the Korean peninsula uh, that goes way back to the uh, Dangun myth. And this uh, indigenous culture is overlaid with uh, Confucius thought, Buddhism, Christianity, late, more lately, more recently, these traditions are alive and all are alive in Korea, but uh, they're nurtured and they're fed by this underlying current of indigenous culture, which actually transcends the border between North and South. Um, and he, he ex expanded on those three basic principles. Uh, Dr. Thomas Ward gave an amazing uh, uh, exploration of, of China's role in the region as the sort of elephant in the regional room. Uh, major power, it seeks to be the major power in the world by 2040. And we must consider this in dealing with the Korean Peninsula in any attempts to bring un reunification there. Uh, also very interestingly, he brought up the, the uh, sort of um, what can we call this, the, the uh, DNA link between Korea, Koreans and Japanese people. Uh, they're, they're linked genetically uh, more closely than are Koreans with Chinese. So it's a very interesting uh, factor that, uh, that uh, is now made aware, we're made aware of through, through uh, scientific uh, research. And UPF has been helping in bringing Japanese and Koreans together uh, by performing bridge ceremonies, track two type of people to people diplomacy and international marriages. Um, as you know, uh, Reverend and Mrs. Moon have been promoting uh, of, of which uh, some of our illustrious participants today are beneficiaries of such marriages. Um, he said also that friend, other friendly nations like the US, Canada, and Europe should support the reconciliation between the two Koreas. Third speaker was Dr. Eugene Lee, who's a, a professor at a university in Seoul, Korea. Uh, 
I believe, of, of uh, Russian extraction, uh, who's, who's living in Korea for many years now. He uh, brought examples of his four, four academicians that he studied under in doing his doctoral work at, at Yonsei University. Some of us will know that name. Um, and how they became involved in government and state affairs. And um, he was saying that academia is highly politicized in Korea and academics would benefit, definitely benefit from being associated with UPF in forums that allow them to uh, be exposed to academics from other parts of the world and other disciplines. Um, he said uh, that uh, they can, academics can play a big role in, in uh, guiding the narrative on the reunification issue. Um, Dr. Aldo Centurion Lopez from Paraguay uh, spoke next as the general coordinator of the Citizens of Mercosur. Mercosur is the um, South American common market that includes Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay, and Paraguay. And his comments focused on the challenges of the development and implementation of Mercosur um, as a market-based alliance between countries for mutual benefit, which could be uh, examined as a model for the two Koreas. Uh, next was Master uh, Mercedes Gufre, who focused on the crucial relationship between the USA, Japan, and South Korea, and uh, also mentioned that notwithstanding that tripartite relationship, South Korea uh, needs different al allies as well, needs to uh, make strong relationships with other countries outside that tripartite relationship. She also focused on, of course, China's geopolitical role with respect to the Korean Peninsula. And finally, Dr. Adrian Meza Souza, after a bit of technical difficulty, uh, was able to conclude the session with his remarks. He's the rector of the Paula Freire University of Nicaragua in, Min and in Managua and a keen observer of the difficulties on the Korean Peninsula. He recommended strongly that the Korean peoples themselves could, should find their own solutions. There's much more to his, his remarks, but uh, uh, he essentially focused on that aspect and said that only they know how to live together uh, and come back together as they have lived continuously for over 5,000 years. So all in all, it was a terrific session and uh, opening up really interesting ideas that I think can uh, show light pathways to future discussions and future uh, uh, conferences and webinars such as this, which can help very much the, the, uh, the effort to uh, bring about reunification of the Koreas. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Reverend Duffy. Great points and a great session. Uh, for the remaining uh, group of our panelists, if we can try to keep our comments just to two to three minutes so we can end this in a timely manner. And I'd like to welcome Mr. Alan Jessen, the coordinator of IED in North America to share about the International Association for Peace and Economic Development session we had just earlier today. Welcome. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Kayleigh and uh, greetings everyone. Uh, we had a very, a uh, good session, strong session, practical, as you can imagine, coming from the business uh, people. And so uh, I'll just highlight a few things. Uh, uh, our moderator was Victor Castillo, who was uh, the UPF uh, IAED person in Mexico. He did a great job. Um, Thomas McDivitt led us off and shared a few things, kind of laid out the framework for IAED. And he made one comment that I, I, I think is important. As we, you know, we're building to expand our network and find real people doing real things on the ground in this area of uh, business being a force for good. And sometimes we see businesses just doing something to check a box that they're uh, for public relations purposes. But we're looking for real, real heroes and real, real people on the ground. Um, our first speaker following uh, Tom was uh, Nicole Verdugo from Chile. And she spent some time talking about the challenge of uh, COVID and uh, how that's changed the dynamic. It's put pressure on the governments uh, to, to do things. But she made an interesting point here. She said, uh, regarding Korea, uh, she said, um, you know, 
and the world faces a complex and uncertain context, but the, but the uh, challenges before the pandemic today do not remain margins of priorities. Um, and uh, the reflection on globalization and the repercussions mean that today here, we can be talking about the unification of the Koreas and how this issue, which seems remote for our countries, is part of the challenges for the future. We sincerely believe that the reunification of the two Koreas is a critical issue for the whole world because it will significantly help to overcome the great gap and conflict that currently exists between the two ideological blocks of the world, being the countries that continue to trust in democracy and those in totalitarian. So she's hopeful that, that as this progresses, that can be a great help for her country too to go through some of these challenges. Our next speaker was Dr. Uh, Diaz, Cesar Diaz from the Paraguay. Uh, and he had a really excellent uh, remarks. Um, we should make these available because he spoke with some uh, expertise about the value of cooperatives and building a solidarity economy. And he contrasted uh, a solidarity economy with uh, a more mercantilist approach. He, he spoke about the need for education and the will of the people to really work together to em, em, embrace that. And he drew some parallels to the a situation in Germany. And, and so he's, he's really promoting an integration approach where uh, you can put people first and, uh, and, but it also requires education of the populace on, on prince, true principles, uh, cooperation, it, it, you know, independence and autonomy. Uh, finally, he said, you know, read this part. He said, in my opinion, this comparative situation on the one hand, the reality of the reunified integrated Germany at present and the possibilities for reunification and integration of the two separated Koreas uh, can lead to a sustained development of the Korean Peninsula. So again, he's uh, God willing, he added. So he's, uh, but he had a lot of depth to what he uh, could offer in terms of helping guide and shape uh, movement towards a solidarity economy. Our next speaker was um, uh, Dr. James Jackson. And this too, he had tremendous points. He's been to North Korea. He uh, was invited to represent USA at uh, uh, Kim Il-sung's funeral. And uh, he laid out some hard questions. He says, from a business perspective, I always think of the hard questions. Is it worth, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? If it's going to be something we put money into, we have to understand what we're getting into. So we led with some hard questions. Um, what specific plan could be put in place that would guarantee peaceful uh, exist, existence and successful development? Um, so I won't read all those, but this is another uh, paper that could that could really give value to to what uh, we're doing. And he he spoke about there needs to be a will. It's one common thread was there needs to be a will of the people to work together. And he, he also he talked about North Korea needs to get react, get uh, a real with itself that if they wanna produce wealth, they, they can't just be living on subsidies. They have to get into the production mode. And, and that, that requires certain economic principles that need to be taught. So if we could bring people there to help teach them, that would be a key thing. One last point on this, because he told a beautiful story where uh, a North Korean uh, ambassador, once he gained their trust said, he's pointed out on a map and he said, look here at this point, this, we have a, a opportunity here in North Korea to create a harbor that would rival Hong Kong because in Russia, their harbors are frozen. This one here is fed by warm waters. We could build a free trade zone here in North Korea that would open up and give value. And, and we have a lot of people who could give value production and rival Korea. Will you help me rival Hong Kong? And then he asked Dr. Jackson, would you help me do this? So uh, and he ended by saying, this could be a big project for us to work together to build a free trade zone uh, that would help bring production and values to the Korean people in the North. Thank you, Thank so you very much. Thank you, Mr. Justin, great points. And I love the practical application to a lot of these points. Yes. 
I'd like to welcome Mrs. Nancy Jubb, who is the Communications Director for Family Federation for World Peace and Unification, who also was our moderator for the IAACP, the newest association, the International Association of Arts and Culture for Peace. Nancy, we'd love to hear your thoughts on the session we had just right before this one. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for having me. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for the background noise. Um, I have a shared office with my husband, and I'm sure you can all appreciate the uh, constraints this pandemic has put on all of us. Um, but yes, uh, you know, I'm probably biased, but I definitely think that amongst all of the really interesting discussions that we've had, that we had the most interesting yeah, discussion. <laughs> I think arts and culture is so exciting. You know, it it really taps into each individual's potential and um, creativity is truly infinite. So um, we had some incredible speakers. I really wish everybody could have uh, joined our session. Um, if you missed it, I apologize. You're going to have to join the next one because it was, <laughs> yeah, I, I, it was incredible, the points say, that yeah, people I, were I, able I, to I, share. Um, we heard from Dr. David Eaton, director of the Hyojung Arts and Culture in Korea. Um, we heard from Mr. Curtis Farrow, who is a producer of Gospel Fest, sponsored by McDonald's and also CEO of Irving Street Rep. Um, we were able to hear from Ms. Gloria de Paraguay, who is a singer. Um, uh, Lyrica Italo Paraguaya, um, founder of an organization that supports sciences, yeah. arts, and technology, also a psychologist. Yeah, okay. We heard That's from the I, Honorable I, I John King, yeah. Minister of Culture and Arts from what, Barbados, also an entertainer himself, and also from Mr. Cesar Villalobos, a performer of traditional Peruvian uh, music. Um, and, you know, the thing about arts and culture is that it really connects us to the divine, to our creator, right? Um, and, and as it connects us to our creator, it allows us all to be creators. And that really helps us to connect to each other. And that connection to each other also helps us to connect to the, yeah. to the world, to nature. Okay. And I, I to um, one place. of the fantastic things about that is that Okay. It allows us to take extreme difficulty, you know, whether we've been through traumatic experiences or even, you know, um, some of our speakers even talked about the challenges of this pandemic that has put on all of us, the stress, the, um, the difficulty that it put on all of us actually challenges us to become better creators, to channel that into something positive that we can give back. And um, through our connection, you know, um, as, as, as people who have creativity within us and God expressing that creativity, the divine nature expressing that creativity, others can also experience the divine through what we are able to produce. And it's able to really pull together and help us to harmonize. Um, yeah, so, um, I, I wish I could explain more, but in the interests of time, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I will say that you will have missed the best discussion out of all three days. And I hope that you will join us next time we have a session um, and really tap into your creative nature as well. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nancy. You definitely convinced us. We'll all be there for the next session. Absolutely. Amen. <laughs> We, uh, we're going to have some final remarks from some of our incredible leaders uh, represented here. And as I invite you, I want to really remind you, try to stick to one minute in your final remarks, just one minute for each of us so we can respect the time of the session. And I also want to let everybody know that if you missed any of the sessions, all of them are available on YouTube and we will share the links with you. Everything was streamed live, even this session we're doing right now, so you can view them on your own time as well. So for our first final remarks, I'd like to welcome Dr. Chang Shik Yang. He's the Chun Wee Won from Latin America and the regional chair of Central America and the Caribbean. Dr. Yang, please share your remarks with us. Okay. Uh Thank you, thank you all. I just want to appreciate uh, conference organizers, uh, Gentleman Reverend Jenkins and uh, Franco and Reddy, 
and the LSL and the EJ and uh, you know, you know Dr. Peraboli did a great job. Uh, so when I look back the uh, last three days, uh, I was attending time to time, decide uh, Korean schedule and uh, our conference schedule. But most of our schedule was, you know, our, now we are 2 a.m. Uh, so it was uh, pretty much inspired by all, uh, you know, sessions, uh, especially uh, now Korea situation, you know, uh, getting changed, already starting. Uh, this current government will, you know, change, has to change toward a uh, positive direction. Somehow timely, our conference uh, is on time to give some uh, great influence from international foundation to uh, this uh, Korean Peninsula. So once again, uh, through our uh, fruitful uh, conference, you know, commentations and uh, uh, speeches, uh, this will, you know, uh, great uh, help and support uh, to uh, movement in Korean, in Korea. Uh, once again, thank you to all. Thank you, Dr. Yang. Now we'd like to hear from Dr. David Kim, the regional president of FFWPU from South America. Welcome, Dr. Kim. Looks like he's not here. Okay, mm. thank you. Let's move on to Dr. Sang Suk Kim, the Regional President of Family Federation in Central America. Dr. Sang Suk Kim. Looks like he went bad already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, two strikes. How about Reverend Dong, Dong Mo Shin? Are you here, the Regional Chair of the UPF South America? Yay, welcome. Uh, because of you people. It looks like a little bit sleepy and long, long day. Anyway, as your chairman of UPEP in South America, I sincerely thank all the panels who have attended in each field so far. Please actively participate in the Think Tank 2022 project. I also thank all the staffs and internal leaders from three regions for their hard work behind the scenes. And thanks all those who attended. God bless you and your family. Thank you. Muchishima gracias. Thank you so much, Reverend Shin. That was wonderful. Now let's hear from Dr. Moonshik Kim, the chairman of UPF of Canada. Welcome, Dr. Kim. I'm not on the program. <laughs> but anyway, the, I'm grateful for all the you know, organizer steps and uh, all the uh, prestigious panels. It's, I think it's a great momentum to move forward for the reunification of North and South Korea. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins and all the uh, great steps. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Sorry for the surprise, but we definitely wanted to hear you and appreciate you. So thank you. We also want to welcome Mr. Tom McDivitt, the chairman of the Washington Times and the H.J. Magnolia Global Foundation. Tom, we'd love to hear your final remarks. Thank you so much, Kayla. Thanks for your uh, leadership. Thanks to Dr. Jenkins and everybody. Um, I uh, really appreciate uh, Alan Jessen and Cheryl Wetstein, who oversaw the ID and the IMAP, of course. But I had the unique experience of speaking in uh, all the regions and uh, I gave four IAD talks, one more tonight at 12 in the morning, and uh, four IMAP talks. The big takeaway is that everywhere, uh, there's a momentum building uh, of taking on the Korean Peninsula. It's kind of, I, I really wondered if this was gonna happen, but I just got off a, pan a panel in Africa and some really top uh, media people, publishers, top published authors, are deadly serious about why Africa needs to contribute to the, to the situation there. And I find that uh, in Asia and everywhere. So I think uh, we've made a, a formation stage move that's gonna cause a ripple effect and it's fascinating and very significant. Um, secondly, we did uh, an, uh, an email uh, press release, uh, a pre-event release that went out to 10,000 journalists, about half and half Spanish language English language, 
and then another thousand online uh, platforms. I don't have the data yet, but when we did something similar for the uh, God Conference and the ICUS Conference, the open rates on these emails, 10,000 reporters, is 12 to 15%. It's unheard of. So, you know, that's, that's, that's interesting. So anyway, it was fantastic momentum. Rally of Hope Sick is coming up. Um, and the budget's been approved for that. So that's a heads up to all the IMAP people. We'll be in touch with you real soon. Okay, thanks. A little more Thank than you. a minute, but thanks for the extra time. Thank you, Mr. McDivitt. We're happy to hear from you. And finally, we'd like to welcome Dr. Michael Jenkins, the president of UPF International and the regional chair of UPF North America. Leading us all, Dr. Jenkins, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you, Kaylee. Uh, Kaylee is the new congressional liaison for UPF of North America, doing a great job. And thank you for helping with all the translators. The translator did, did an amazing work. I want to thank Reverend Shin, Dr. Young, and Reverend Moon Shik Kim, and all of our elders from Korea that represent Mother Moon, Dr. Young, Chung Shik also. Uh, we're really grateful for the wisdom and the leadership you provide to understand Mother Moon's vision for Think Tank 2022. And I especially want to thank EJ and Eliezer, the tech team. You did a magnificent job. It's a, like light years ahead of where we were last September. And every program worked and every speaker made it to the program. So I'm extremely grateful for that. Our Secretary Generals, Eliezer, Larry Moffitt, also, uh, uh, Samal Faraboli, Dr. Faraboli, and also Franco Familar, who kind of chaired our preparation uh, from Canada. Canada did such a great job. All the South American countries, uh, Central America, I was amazed. As Tom mentioned, it was really interesting how every association has a different focus, academicians or culture and arts or uh, parliamentarians but it has kind of a collective influence that really is much broader than just looking from the political side. And I could feel the influences building for our expert working group. Uh, Congressman Dan Burton was featured as the international co-chairman of IAPP for the whole world. And he was, uh, did a recording and it was shown for the Asia and also African and several of the other global summits uh, from the continents. I'm really grateful for our co-chairman of IAPP, uh, who's with us here today, Congressman Dan Burton. Uh, Congressman Burton, as you know, was chairman of the Western Hemisphere. For him, uh, really, the Americas are his field of work for many, many years. And he still is very influential with the Foreign Relations Committee and the Committee on the Western Hemisphere. So I really want to express my uh, appreciation for him. All of our coordinators have made these sessions. God bless you all. It was really amazing. At this time, we'd like to come to the conclusion of our program. The central point of this program is to affirm uh, the resolution for Think Tank 2022. We want to bring that to a conclusion that we want to join together. Our resolution today is part of one that will be done in every uh, region of the world, but it's not the final session. The final session is going to be done jointly on May 8th with Dr. Walsh and Mother Moon directly. Um, they asked that we go ahead and conclude our conferences with the regional conclusion, and that's what we're doing today. I'm very grateful to introduce to you for some brief uh, remarks on what he saw happening with this movement of the experts working group, and then Congressman Burton is gonna lead us in the affirmation of the resolution. Let's welcome the international co-chairman of the International Association of Parliamentarians for Peace, Congressman Dan Burton. Welcome, Congressman Burton. Hey, well, thank you. I uh, really appreciate those kind remarks, Mike. I hope you listening. Uh, let me start off by saying uh, uh, I have never been as impressed uh, as I have been today listening to the people that preceded me uh, in, this, uh, in this series. Uh, it's just amazing. And Mike, uh, you're to be congratulated, uh, Mike Jenkins, for all the hard work you do. And as long as Dr. Walsh and, and uh, the other leaders said, Kaylee, you've done a great job as, as the moderator for all this. Uh, you're to be congratulated. Let, let me start off real quickly before I get to the resolution, which I'm sure we'll all agree to. First of all, the Korean War started 
you know, almost over 70 years ago. It's, it's high time that that problem be resolved. And, and with all the people who are working on this right now that we've heard from today and others, uh, I'm confident that we'll reach that goal in the not too distant future. Uh, you know, over 3 million people died in that war. And, and although the war is not concluded, there is an armistice. And we wanna make sure that those people did not die in vain and that reunification of the Korean Peninsula will take place and it will be done in a very peaceful way. Uh, the reason the whole world should be concerned about this is because uh, North Korea has nuclear capabilities. And until we resolve that problem, not only the Korean Peninsula, but the entire world has some great concerns about what could happen if things could get out of control or would get out of control. So we're all concerned about that. And I want to, I want to compliment again, Dr. Hak Shahan Moon for her efforts for peace. I, as I've said before, I've never met anybody that has worked as hard as she has for peace. Her, her husband, her late husband, Dr. Moon, he did an outstanding job when he was with us, but his wife has carried on so well. And I just want to congratulate Dr. Hak Shahan Moon for her continued efforts for peace. She works tirelessly and we really, really all that all ought to give her a big pat on the back for her hard work. Uh, you know, we're working collaboratively for peace and it's something that uh, we, we must continue to do. There are a number of organizations within UPF that have been working and will be working in the not too dis distant future on various aspects of our goals. Some of those are the Korean reunification webinar, which a series which is uh, in progress the International Leadership Conference of 2021, the expert working groups, uh, the fact-finding fun consultations, and of course, the World Summit 21, which we'll be involved with in the not too distant future. So let me summarize by saying, this is a worthy goal. We must continue to work as hard as, as we ever have to uh, cause the reunification of the Korean Peninsula and peace, not only for Korea, but for the entire world. And with that, I would like to read our a resolution and I'd like for all of you to raise your right hand and agree with me to the resolution. And the resolution is, and I think it's maybe up on the screen for us, I hope so. Yes, it uh, is. Do we have it there yet, Kaylee? Yes, it's there. Yes, it's here. Okay, if you could put okay. Congressman Burton side by side. Okay. Very good, thank you. All right, here's the resolution. Please raise your right hand. We therefore resolve and propose on this day, April 30th, 2021, to inaugurate an international alliance for a unified Korea as a virtual think tank consisting of a global network of experts who share a common commitment and concern to bring about peace on the Korean Peninsula. And I wish you would all say with me, I do and I will. I do, I do you and I will. I will. Okay, well, thank you very much. It's been a great meeting. Look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you, Congressman Burton. We'll turn this back over to Kayla. Congratulations, America's ILC. Uh, we really have gained a great momentum and a great foundation has expanded so much in three days. Uh, there were over 80 speakers for the Americas, prestigious heads of state, members of parliament, religious, business, faith leaders, also academia and, and culture and arts and business, amazing. So now, Kayla, take us away to our, our concluding point, and we're going to end with Archbishop Stallings in prayer after Mr. Moffat. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Incredible feat, incredible work over the last three days. Let's welcome Mr. Larry Moffitt, the Secretary General of UPF North America, who's gonna share with us some exciting news about the upcoming Rally of Hope. Welcome, Larry. Hi, thank you very much, Kayleigh. It is my great pleasure to be able to tell you about this Rally of Hope. This will be the sixth one in a series. It will be Sunday, May 9th, uh, on the Korean side of the planet and over here in the Western Hemisphere. It will be Saturday evening, May 8th. Uh, Dr. Hak Jahan Moon will speak. She is giving everything of herself to 
uh, help bring peace to the Korean Peninsula and finally end this incredible conflict and the scale she thinks on and the, the energy and investment she makes is global and unimaginable to the most of us. We have some top name speakers who will be offering their encouragement to the Rally of Hope and to its goals, including from North America, such as uh, Vice President Mike Pence, until recently Vice President of the United States, the former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, until just recently, also until just recently, uh, Secretary Mark Esper, the Secretary of Defense. We'll also have the Honorable David Beasley, who was the Governor of South Carolina is now director of the executive world, executive director of the World Food Program, uh, which has done such a great job that it, it won the Nobel Prize this last year. From Japan, the Honorable Ichi, Ichiro uh, Isawa, who's a member of the House of Representatives, Africa, current president uh, of the Republic of Niger, President Bazoum, and possibly the president of Zanzibar, and also the former prime minister of Sri Lanka, His Excellency uh, Ranil Wickeremensi. So those are some of the speakers we have. There'll be some others, and all of them are very much behind what we're doing here and what Dr. Moon is doing in the Rally of Hope. So it's going to be an excellent event. Again, mark your calendar. Uh, you can do it in Penn Sunday, uh, May 9th on the Korean side of the world and on this side in the United States and this hemisphere, May 8th, Saturday evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Larry. Larry, I'd just like to mention also that we had a partnership in this event with the Washington Times. I want to thank mm -hmm. Tom Divitt, Chairman of the Times. And we also want to thank Women's Federation for World Peace, President Selly, who's also the International Vice President. Women's Federation partnered with us, and that really helped us bring out the First Lady. So thank you to those organizations and businesses that were behind this. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins, and thank you, Mr. Moffitt. We are at the conclusion of our program, and as always, we want to end with a prayer honoring our creator. So I'd like to welcome Archbishop George Augustus Stallings, Jr., who's the co-chair of the American Clergy Leadership Conference. Welcome, Archbishop Stallings. Please close us out in prayer. Thank you very much, Kaylee. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. For you have so fearfully and wonderfully made each one of us in your divine image and likeness, so that with the indwelling of your spirit within each and every one of us, we might manifest your glory and your presence on the earth. Truly, this three-day Universal Peace Federation International Leadership Conference, centering on Canada, North America, Central America, and South America has brought out the genius of those whom you have created in your image and likeness. The profound workshop, the discussions, the panelists, the brilliance, the erudition of those who poured out themselves in reflecting on peace, particularly on the Korean Peninsula, clearly demonstrates that we have the wherewithal, and we have the people in our midst who can truly take dominion over this earth. For it was your desire, O oh God, that not only we be fruitful and multiply, but we take dominion over this earth so that in so doing, we might establish the kingdom of God, also known as the kingdom of heaven right here on earth. This three-day gathering, this summit, this conference clearly demonstrated that we have within us the power and the authority to, bring, to be the peacemakers who are truly the children of God. Yet we know, Lord God, that if it had not been for the true parents of heaven, earth, and humankind, Father and Mother Moon, who challenged us to come together to create this cohesive force to address the issues of our day, that each one of us would be going separately in his or her own distinct fields of endeavor to do whatever one could. But when we come together in unity, there is strength. And so we thank you, O oh God, for Father and Mother Moon, and particularly for Mother, Hak, for Mother Moon right now, Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, the mother of peace, for leading and guiding us in this effort to create not only world peace, but to establish it firmly in 
North and South America on the, on the Korean Peninsula. We are so also reminded, Lord God, that since you have so richly endowed us with all of the gifts, the talents, the strength, the knowledge, and the understanding as to how to achieve peace, that we might stand in the vanguard, where we might be on the front lines, uniting with your mother, faithfully attending her and serving her so that we together can see the coming of our God and his Christ. Let us also be mindful that you have entered into a covenantal relationship with us, that you have promised to ne neither forsake us nor abandon us. And all we need do is to call on the God within so that we can truly become and realize that we are one universal family under God, brothers and sisters, one unto another. And finally, Lord God, as was stated by the great American poet, Robert Frost, even though there is still so much work to be done and knowing that and knowing what it will be, what will be required to accomplish it, remind us that because we have entered into this covenantal relationship with you, that we have a portion of responsibility. Namely, we have promises that we must keep and we have miles to go before we can sleep. Bless us and keep us. In your most precious name we pray. And in all the names of the great saints and sages of the world's religions, in the name that is given above all names, the name God, by whatever name we call God, and in our own names as blessed central families. Amen and adieu. Thank you. Thank you, Archbishop Stallings. Kaylee, I'm just going to ask for one more thing. We have a traditional way to end our meetings, Congressman Burton. You've seen this many, many times in Korea. I'd like to call on uh, Dr. Samal Faraboli to give us three cheers of Alkmanse. And I'd like you to do it in Spanish or Portuguese is fine. Just three cheers of Alkmanse. First for God, second for Jesus and true parents, and third for the victory of the ILC and Think Tank 2022. Uh, Reverend Dr. Samal Faraboli, the chairman okay. of our, our Secretary General of UPF for South America. Thank you. Okay. Three times. Para Deus! <laughs> okay. Okay. Para os verdadeiros pais! Para a vitória das Américas! Thank you, Congressman Burton. Thank you, Archbishop Stallings and all of our leaders. Kayle, final conclusion. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Get some sunshine, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Congressman Burke. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you. All thank of you. Thank you. Hard work. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Lee, sir. Thank you. Thank okay, you. thank you, EJ. Good night, everyone. Bye bye, everyone. Thank, thank you, you so you. much. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you. Hey, Congressman. Hey. Thank you. Yes, thank you, EJ, for your hard work you do. Well done. Oh, well your done. name is well Resolution done. now, Alice. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Put a resolution up. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Put, okay, just a moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Jones. I saw you made a very beautiful resolution there. Yes, I, I did. Yeah, yeah. Just a moment. LSL, I need to talk with you. Okay, I will call soon. Just a moment. Yeah, yeah. For me, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, EJ. Good night. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Elisa, send you. it to me, okay? Yeah. Okay, I will send it. All right. Bye-bye.